What's up, you guys? Tyler Huxford here, the Red Reefer. And for today's video, we are going to do an update on the uh, 120 gallon Red Sea 500 Max. We haven't talked about this tank in some time. And honestly, the reason for that is just because for a while, this tank was just kind of struggling. And um, we've finally found a few of the root causes for those struggles. So I'm here to kind of talk about what I've learned in the you know three years that I've had this tank as well as the goals moving forward. And we will provide monthly updates here as I really think we're ready to begin seeing this tank really tank off now that we've got a plan moving forward. Part of the reason that this tank was suffering was because um, I candidly was just not using the skimmer properly. I really think it's important when you've got a skimmer to make sure that you're emptying out your cup once a week. And if you are not capturing enough skim to uh, empty in a week's time, you're probably not running the skimmer correctly. I also found out that my RODI system uh, that I was using to top off the water needed a new membrane like last year. And so we were slowly introducing just tons of metals into the tank, which are really impacting the corals. Um, I also learned that I wasn't keeping appropriate levels of magnesium in this tank. So magnesium and calcium will be a major emphasis moving forward, especially as we are going to be introducing some LPS into this tank. I want this to slowly become a mostly LPS tank as part of the mixed reef strategy. Um, but other than that, really pleased with what's going on. I finally found some lights that I like. So the lights that you see up top there are the Radeon, and I believe these are the G5s, super reliable and great programming. They've grown some really great corals. So now let's kind of dive into the tank. We're gonna, stop, we're gonna start with the ugliest part of the tank here. So um, a lot of corals are dying here. Initially, I had put um, some Hollywood stunners up in this top left and it just candidly kind of took over just grew outgrew its welcome I probably will never put Hollywood stunner um, In a tank again that is not on an isolated rock So usually I never have anemones like this these rainbow anemones just scattered throughout I usually like to get only carry like one or two um, And then sell the rest to the store for store credit I'm keeping these here specifically so that they can spread and kind of kill everything in sight in this top left corner so that I can start fresh. The plan here is to introduce brand new acros to the top of this tank, some digis, and then a few monoporas on the second level, but not on the top. That's one thing I've learned is that when you put monoporas on the top, they can cover everything, including those uh, acros, so won't be doing that. Uh, moving over to the right just a little bit, so this is where my torch garden is. So I cur currently have two torches here. I have a what they call a Toby torch here, um, and as well as just a Hellfire torch coral, which is one of my favorites. Um, and then I've got a nice little piece of Euphilia there, an Aussie. I've also got my OG bounce mushroom there in the middle, which is beautiful. It has really taken off. This is one of those pr premium corals that I really recommend people buy because it is hardy, it grows super fast, and you can frag it and trade it for all kinds of store credit. It's a really great looking coral. Also growing a really nice zoa colony down there. Uh, the Rasta zoas you see closer to the bottom as well as the orange oxides there in the middle. Um, and then you also see some of those lime green monoporas. Those are actually monoporas that are branching, not acros. And uh, those are taken off quite nicely. Over here on the right hand side, so I've added uh, I, I continue to grow some acros there. I've got the golden rods there up at the top, that lime green branching monopora, uh, which is uh, starting to take over that red monopora, which is starting to die. And the reason, again, that it's starting to die is just because I let the phosphates just creep up way too much from, you know, not properly filtering uh, with my skimmer, which has now been adjusted. I've also got way too many mushrooms uh, just scattered throughout here, so I need to cover those up. Plan is to cover that up with one of those Japanese leather corals. I think that'll look really nice. Um, and then I'm going to work on scattering some really nice zoas to the bottom here. I've also got a fro uh, frog spawn that you can kind of see down at the bottom, hoping that that sort of spreads out. We've got the candy canes on the bottom right here. Uh, really like the, that kind of contrast to where the dragon eyes and the orange oxides are, but I want those orange oxides to take over. One of the things that um, 
was also happening is back when the tank was thriving maybe a year ago the red monopora was growing so much that i was trying to break pieces off and throw it away and some of those pieces broke off landed on the ground landed on other parts of the rock and then started growing and uh, you know red monopora can outgrow its welcome a lot of times so the good news is is that with the tank having taken a few steps back in the last couple months this sort of gives me an open canvas to grow the corals I do want, including the orange oxides, the dragon eyes, um, nice new spots to put euphilias, which I'll be doing. Uh, I hope to cover this area with really colorful zoas as well as hammer corals. Um, I, I think it's a really nice look when you've got euphilias on the perimeters, the sides of your tank and rock work. So that's what I'll be doing here. Plan is to cover this bottom right section with uh, brand new uh, colorful uh, zoas, maybe some fruit loops, maybe some uh, super sands, as well as those hammer corals. So moving down on the bottom here, so we've got that nice space invader chalice there. That coral is actually suffering as of late, and I'm not sure why, because everything else in the tank is doing really well. So that piece doesn't look quite as nice, hoping that can recover. Um, that's standing right in front of some purple heart zoas, which are some of my favorite uh, purple heart hornets, I think that they call those. And that's one of my favorite zoas. Um, got a really nice colony going here. I also have just a rock that I have, I'm growing some, uh, you know, green star polyps here. It's, it's kind of branching off, which isn't my favorite look, but anytime I, I want to start like a, a, a green star polyp backdrop, I grab that from here. I put it on this rock that's just far away from everything else so it doesn't take over um, and it's looking and it's growing pretty well. Uh, and then I've got another rock that I just have some eagle eyes growing on. You can see that some monoporas made it onto that rock. It's just there growing. Um, I've also kept that rock isolated. I'll probably put some other zoas on there so it kind of becomes, you know, a little zoa garden there. That was the intent. It just kind of adds a, a 3D element when you've got like just a small rock on its own sitting there in the front. And then I've also got a frammer up there on the top left. Um, I really like frammers. I'm a huge fan. Just anything that, that glows that bright, um, I'm really a fan of. Uh, pro tip, I really think it's best to buy euphilias in person at a store where you can see them as opposed to ordering them online because they don't always come in the way that they looked online. Just a thought there. Moving over to the bottom left. So this is a part where I have some work to do. I initially put a mushroom, one of my very first corals that a friend gave me at the bottom left there, and it just took over and it, and it adds zero color to the tank, just texture. So I'm actually in the process of throwing, I've actually thrown some super sands um, on that rock already and just waiting for those to take over. And then I'm actually slowly going after this corner with some Kalkwasser to kind of kill those mushrooms. And then I'm also growing that, uh, that golden yellow uh, hammer in the left side as well. So that is the tank. And you know, we're, we're doing that while keeping three tangs. So I got a powder blue tang, a yellow tang, a purple tang. Oh, and a blue tang. So I've got four tangs in here. And you know, they do a pretty good job. It's not World War III. Um, the other thing that I'm doing that's a little risky here is I've got three pygmy angels. Risky because the pygmy angels can fight amongst themselves, but also they're, no, they're not always reef safe. Um, but I've got a coral beauty, I've got a flame angel, and I've got a lemon peel, believe it or not. Um, and they totally get along and I don't really see them picking at corals, not even those zoas, which is great. Part of that is just because I keep this tank, you know, really well fed. I've got that chroma school that you see there. There's about six of those there. And then I've got two um, perucula clowns and uh, they kind of hang out in those anemones there. But as I mentioned, we're going to let the anemones do their thing and make sure to kill everything that's up in that top left corner. And then I'm going to start farming those out and trading those in for store credit. So they can't get too comfortable in there. Um, I also have a green mandarin in here somewhere. It usually doesn't come to the front of the tank, uh, as well as a watchman goby and a pistol shrimp, which uh, make their appearance in the bottom right corner there every once in a while, every now and again. And uh, that is the tank. So we will be providing monthly updates here. We'll be comparing this snapshot you see here with uh, the new videos moving forward. I cannot wait to report on the progress here in the next month. And uh, hopefully this will become an outstanding tank. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in for next week's video.